So I've been in the marketing industry for over 10 years, and I have experienced content creation burnout too many times to count. For me, I'd have so much fun creating a ton of Instagram content only to one day wake up, absolutely hate the platform, and then ghost my followers for like six months at a time. Or there have been plenty of times where I get way too busy in my business with client work or producing new things for the business, being in the business that I go to post something at the end of the day for Instagram and I can't think of a single content idea. The last thing that I want to do is produce a piece of content because I am so burnt out. And listen, content creation burnout happens to everyone. It happens to me to this day, even as a content strategist. I have learned a ton about why content creation burnout happens and how to potentially avoid it. And while I want to teach you those mechanisms, I also want you to understand what to do when you are facing burnout and equip you with tools and tips and tricks on how to get through that season of burnout. So tip number one, you need to have a system. First, I want to talk to you about how to avoid burnout and some of the steps that I like to take to not reach that burnout point in the first place. Some of you might be in the process where you have to create content day in, day out. You wake up in the morning, think about what you post, and then post it. And that is a quick way to burn yourself out on content creation. Because one morning you're going to wake up and not feel like it, and that's going to spiral you into not producing content for the next month, two months, three months. So building a system and a workflow and an approach to content creation is going to help you kind of refocus your time and energy in a different way. So the first part of creating this system is to align your overall business goals with the content that you're creating. And I know this might seem a little high level, but truly understanding what your business goals are will help you understand what platforms to show up on, therefore, what content you need to produce. And you're not going to feel pressure when you jump on TikTok and the next latest, biggest, greatest expert is telling you that you have to be posting three TikToks a day. But you know that your ideal client doesn't even really consume TikTok content. So if you're looking to maybe book more one-on-one clients, lean into Instagram where you can have those deep connections and have meaningful conversations in comments and DMs. Or maybe you're like me and you're trying to get on bigger stages and become a thought leader. So you need things like long-form content on YouTube, connecting with people on LinkedIn. But again, the first step in this process is to know your business goals and align them with the content you need to produce. Moving into the second part of this process, you need to figure out a routine or a workflow for how you create content. To keep this simple, you need to know the steps that it takes for you to take a content idea all the way through to producing it and posting it. By listing out that workflow, you're going to develop a routine of, I need to do this on this day, Maybe a team member needs to do this on another day. I can batch stuff here. This is unnecessary so we can eliminate it. Or I know that I hate editing videos, so maybe I need to outsource it. By understanding your routine and your workflow, you can have a systematic process for how you create content and you're going to avoid the overwhelm of having to wake up and think about what you're going to post on Instagram because you already scheduled that last week. This last step in creating a system is the one that ruffles feathers a lot. And that's actually organizing your content ideas, your workflow, your entire process into some kind of software. And no, your phone notes app is not the place to do that. You need to be able to see your content in a pipeline style form. That way you can see what needs to be done, who needs to be doing it, and when it needs to go out. You can build this in whatever software that you like. My personal favorite is Airtable. And if you want some more help with this, I actually have a free template for you here that you guys can use to get started. Link's in the description below. So tip number two, we need to figure out your non-negotiables. So now that you know certain steps that'll help you produce content consistently, but also help you avoid that content creation burnout, I want to dive even deeper. By determining your non-negotiables, and we're going to get into how to figure out your non-negotiables here in a second, but by focusing in on this, it's going to help you avoid burnout, but also know how to manage it when it does happen. Before we dive into the specifics of your non-negotiables and what that means, I want you to know that you're going to go through seasons of creating content. Sometimes you are going to feel like posting Instagram stories every day, all day long. And there are going to be other days when even opening Instagram, opening the app itself is going to fill you with so much dread. And just know that that is okay and that is normal. Happens to me all the time. But again, remember back to the system that you need to put in place is going to help you still maintain that consistency even when you have to face burnout. 
So think back to tip one, when we aligned your business goals with the content that you're going to produce. This is going to help you figure out your top priorities when it comes to content creation. And this is gonna become part of your non-negotiable content creation tasks. Once we've decided what those are, this gives you a formula of exactly what you need to do when you are facing burnout. Your non-negotiables might look completely different from mine, but just know that these are the tasks and things that you are going to prioritize over anything else when you're facing burnout. And these are the things that you need to put on your to-do list as a, I have to do this in order to maintain some sort of consistency in marketing my business online. So let me give you a couple of examples here. Personally, my non-negotiable is focusing on my YouTube videos. I prioritize that specific type of content over any other content in my small business because I know that it's going to help me not only meet my business goals, but I can then take that YouTube video and repurpose it in other places without a ton of extra effort when I am facing burnout. That's the system and approach that I have created for myself in my business. So when I'm struggling to stay up to date with trends on TikTok or Reels, I actually prioritize batching my YouTube videos over anything else. Because I know when I am struggling to keep up with trends and create a ton of short form content, I know that I can take those YouTube videos, pull clips from it, and still maintain consistency with my Reels, with my TikToks, and I can call it a day. And even though they might not be the highest performing or hardest hitting content, I'm still showing up for my audience, still delivering value in a way that honors my energy and repurposes content I already have so that I'm not having to show up on camera day in and day out for stories or for TikTok or things like that. But for you, maybe you have a non-negotiable of creating at least three different Instagram posts per week that are more photo-based or graphic-based. You know that's what your audience resonates with. You know that that aligns with helping you bring clients or one-on-one work into your business or whatever your goal is here. So when you're feeling good about content creation, you have those three set non-negotiable posts, but maybe you have more flexibility to create two additional like trendy reels per week, or you have the time to show up on Instagram stories a couple of days a week. But when you feel like crap and you feel like you are in a content creation burnout, you know that you have three non-negotiable posts that are lower lift that are going to go out as photos or graphics on Instagram each week. You have to make that your non-negotiable but you aren't forced to show up on camera in a way that doesn't feel good when you're facing burnout. So tip number three is actually to lean into repurposing your content. Now, let's say that you are in a really bad period of content creation burnout, and you really just want to throw your phone at the wall when you open Instagram. You have so much client work. You have to cook dinner. Your kids have 10 soccer games this weekend. And the last thing you want to do, the last thing you have energy for is creating content for your business. And now this is a bit of tough love, this is not the time to stop posting altogether. Because in three months, when you realize you haven't posted anything and your leads dry up, your sales dry up, you are going to wish that you would have been posting more consistently on Instagram to at least keep consistency in marketing your business online. And while that content might not be viral or it might not be your hardest hitting, it is still at least showing up for your potential customers, your potential audience members, and consistently marketing your business. And now, a quick caveat here is, yes, I always want you to prioritize your mental well-being and your mental health. So if you are seriously struggling with this, absolutely press pause on social media content. It can totally wait. And for those really, really hard seasons, I don't want you pushing through a depressive episode or really hard times like grief or things like that by posting on social media and it feels really icky. Absolutely take time for yourself. Life is hard and we've all been there. I'm more so talking about content creation burnout when you just feel like you are so over content. And when you're in those seasons of like, I just don't feel like posting anything. This seems so stupid. This seems so silly. Yeah, maybe pause for like a week or two. Take a quick little break and maybe inform your followers. But I don't want you to pause all of your marketing if you're simply facing content creation burnout. So when you don't feel like producing new content, you can lean into the content that you've already created. If you're really feeling the burnout, literally just go back to your old posts, schedule them out, and repost them again. You don't need to change the graphic. You don't really need to change the caption unless you feel like doing so. Here is your permission slip to simply go back to your old Instagram content, find some top performing posts, sit down and schedule it out for the next month and call it a day. Because again, that's still gonna maintain consistency. You aren't putting time and energy into creating new things. You simply maybe need to take an hour or two to 
go and schedule things that you've already created. And even better, if you don't even feel like doing that, I'm telling you, go grab a VA for a couple of hours, go grab an intern, your niece, whoever it is, teach them how to do it real quick and let them run with it. While burnout is bound to happen at any point in your content creation process, you can use these strategies and mechanisms to help avoid it, but also understand how to manage it when it does happen. Follow any one or all of these tips to help you in your season of content creation burnout. But I have one last thing for you, and it involves building a strategy for this from the ground up. Inside of the content curriculum, I actually show you how to create five strategic content pillars that align with specific topics and goals in this fun format that allows you to have enough content ideas to produce for an entire year. And don't worry, these aren't your generic content ideas that you're gonna find when you search Pinterest. These are ones that are specific to you and your business. So if you wanna learn more about the strategy, click the link in the description below. Otherwise, don't forget to hit subscribe and I will see you next week.